Hey guys, welcome back to another Squishy Makeover. <laughs> where I take cute squishies and turn them evil. <laughs> I'm going to be making some creepy, kinda cute squishies, I guess, in this episode. My squishy makeovers are, as always, inspired by the squishy queen, Mariah Elizabeth. Hey, it's me. In fact, most of the things I do are inspired by her since I'm a huge fan. There's going to be some wonky looking stuff in this video. That's not including my face, but that too. That too. So just prepare yourself. <laughs> For the first makeover, I'm going to be turning this pig colored <gasps> owl into a Mothman inspired baby <laughs> creature thing. Please help me. No. I started off by giving the owl a rough, rough, rough sanding just to roughen him up and tear up all his flesh this is supposed to help the paint stick better after that i painted the whole thing a base layer of white and then another layer and another layer and another layer who is the mothman a lot of people believe he's like the bad omen bringer basically right before something bad happens he shows up which i mean what a coincidence wherever i go chaos seems to follow me as well plot twist I am the Mothman. No. Anyways, I thought I could use a lot more puffy paint, so I added some around his whole head. Why? I thought it would give it like a furry kind of texture because, you know, moths are fuzzy. Aww. Made sense to me in the moment. Home, no more home to me, whither must I wander, hunger my driver. So for the body, I started painting it a dark grayish purple color. Personally, I love the color purple, and normally Mothman isn't a bright color. He's usually a pretty dark color whenever he's photographed. For the fur on top, I went in with the same color, just a few adjustments. After adding a ton of black, it's now several shades darker. That way there's a nice contrast to, you know, spice things up. A little hot sauce on top, please. His eyes are normally glowing red, but I made them purple. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't want him to scare the sparkle butts. This isn't an exact representation of Mothman, it's just a creature inspired by him. I'm also adding a few light purple highlights to make him look a little less traumatizing. I went in with light purple around the neck and feet to create some separation. Pretty self-explanatory. I wasn't really doing anything crazy. I felt like the eyes didn't have enough depth. The light purple just wasn't cutting it for me. So I went back and added some white highlights this time. There, that's better. I like the way that looks. At this point, I felt like it looked too much like he was wearing a mask. <coughs> so I went in with some black over the ears and mouth. Did that help? Not really. It still looks like a mask. Okay. Some mistakes can't be fixed. I then added an eyelid. Just one eyelid. To make it look like he just woke up, but it kinda looks like he's winking creepily in that weird uncle type way. He's kinda starting to look like a Pokemon, which was not intentional, but I also don't mind it. I made a light purple mouth for my moth, more like a light purple X. I did look up how a moth's mouth looks. It looked interesting. And so the X is my interpretation of it. It may not be accurate, but it's there, so yeah. If you're new here and you've ever breathed oxygen before, you should consider selling your soul to me by subscribing to my channel. Make sure you ring that bell icon thing and select all so you don't lose me on the internet or miss any videos. I post new videos every Friday. <laughs> I would subscribe, but I'm actually a plant. I breathe CO2. You little sparkle butt. I then moved on to working on the wings. I used his arms as wings. They're kind of like wings that are folded down at his sides. I added some spots and lines to them to make it look more mothish. Then I went on to paint a little squiggle on his belly. That's how you know he's an extra furry guy. Moving on, I started painting on his face. These aren't supposed to be little angry eyebrows, by the way. They're supposed to be antennas that I'm just painting on. I would have made the antennas like popping out on top of his head, but you know how I feel about antennas. <laughs> I didn't want to dig up all that childhood trauma. So before we move on to Maleficent, here's our finished owl baby mothman creature. But the next oh. one's gonna be amazing, right? 
This one's going to be a little traumatizing for the squishy and, well, maybe for you too. I'd like to apologize in advance for the murder you're about to witness. I figured since this goat kinda looks like Maleficent, I'd turn it into her. But obviously this goat doesn't really bear any resemblance to Maleficent other than the horns. So... This is gonna require multiple amputations. Our first problem is the ears. I feel like these are our main issue. It's what's really making it look like a goat. Bad. No, you've been a good friend. And that's in the thick and thin. And I know it's never gonna end. On second thought, it still doesn't really look like a human. Bad. Duh. But that's okay. I'll just chop off some more. I also went in and chopped off the legs since, you know, she doesn't need four legs. Since... She's human. I took off her buns because it was looking a little too much like a shelf. It was just kind of like sticking out there. I'm starting to think that turning this into a whole other species was very ambitious of me. And since this little pimple of a nose on its face looks nothing like a human nose, I'll be getting rid of that too. Ow. No, you've been a Maybe Pinkie Pie's nose and the goat's nose can be like friends or something. I don't know. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. At this point, it's looking pretty beat up. This is just the storm before the calm, or maybe it's dead and there's no bringing it back to life. We'll see. Finally, it's time for some exfoliation. I'm going to sand down the goat, or at least what's left of it. Home, no more home to me, whither must I I then went in with some puffy paint around the face for Maleficent's hood and blended that in where the ears used to be. Squishy makeovers take an absolute eternity to do, so in case you're wondering, I did use a hairdryer to help speed up the drying time between the layers. And since Maleficent's most iconic things are her cape and hood, I started off by painting those black. I do like all of my creations to be pretty colorful. I think it's just more fun and has more variety that way. For some reason, I'm using a lot of black and purples today. It's not intentional, but I'm okay with it. I do have some squishies picked out for next time, and I promise they will be a whole lot more colorful. For the face, I painted her a nice light green color. She's actually starting to look very familiar to an old hag I know. That face paint kinda got all over the place, so I went in with a black Posca <sighs> pen to touch things up. I know that's illegal, but I'm still new to all this. I'm still learning. My squishy makeovers aren't the best. It's a really small squishy and it's hard to paint, so let's not... Let's not ah! judge. I promise I'm trying my best. Squishies are just not easy things to paint. There's definitely a lot of struggle involved, but that's okay because I kind of just like having fun and going crazy with them. I went in with some black puffy paint for her collar. I needed it to stand out so the puffy paint gave it that extra texture. I also painted on some hands in white puffy paint. Pretty simple hands, nothing too fancy. You might notice her lip indents. Um, yeah. Mwah. It looks kinda like she's got a little too much Botox. Mwah. It almost looks like her lips got stung by a hive of bees. <laughs> I obviously won't be making Maleficent's lips that huge. Just now. I'll fix that. I'm getting to it. But first I'm going to be painting the robes a nice purple color, which will hopefully add some much needed dimension and contrast to her. That way she doesn't look like she's draped in all black with a bright green cucumber face mask. Using a dotting tool, I gave her black, soulless eyes and some wispy eyelashes. I also added some little black lips. The indentation on her face is a lot bigger. <gasps> Obviously that bruise didn't heal. I probably could have done a better job filling that in. Obviously I'm not anywhere near an expert. I like painting and torturing squishies. Sometimes they end up looking beat up or like they got ran over by 10 trucks. Maybe some eyebrows can save her or maybe not. She's going to be wearing some makeup. Makeup fixes everything. Some purple eyeshadow to really bring out those beautiful black soulless eyes. Oh yes. What a beauty. After that, I added some highlights to her eyes to make it look a little less creepy. Although I'm pretty sure this one's already past the point of no return. You win some, you lose most. But that's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I did some more touch-ups around the robe and face. She's looking a little funky. I'll admit, I don't really know what's going on with her face. But yeah, since this is the dark side, horrors are of course to be expected. <laughs> <laughs> Squishies are supposed to be great stress relievers, but I'll be honest, these caused me a whole lot of unnecessary stress. <laughs> Needless to say, it's been a long week. If you'd like to see more stressful stress relievers, click on the top right. Or 
If you'd rather not be stressed out, click on the bottom left.